Okay, hi everybody. It's Kasha Dupuy from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. Um, welcome. So we'll just give it a couple more minutes, oops, um, before we get started. Um, yeah, hopefully everyone's having a great Monday. The sun is shining. It's actually nice enough um, that you don't really, well, you do should probably still wear a sweater or something, but the sun, if you're in it for long enough, it keeps you very warm. Um, on the weekend when we had those other nice days, because yesterday was not very nice, um, I got a sunburn on Saturday <laughs> from sitting outside for a couple hours. So the sun is great. Just make sure that you're being responsible and putting on some sunscreen, especially in these first couple days of spring. Um, we're not used to it and our bodies aren't used to it. So you want to make sure they're protected. Otherwise, your nose and your cheeks might hurt a little bit like mine. <laughs> So we'll just wait two more minutes, maybe not even two more minutes before we start. Um, so thank you all for joining us, joining me. <laughs> um, it's Kasha Dupuy from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. Um, and we're just about to get started with this week's um, Not A Library Live Create With Kasha. And we're gonna be making um, this cheeky llama. Yeah, so very simple. And just like last week, um, we're only gonna be needing to use three colors. Yep, I thought that would be a good way to go for a little bit. One, we're gonna learn about what monochromatic means, um, but also in case you're running low on paints, like actually, believe it or not, I'm starting to do, um, this way we can still make something beautiful with limited resources, right? Using the best of what we've got um, to make something awesome. So uh, before we get started, I'll do a quick run through of the materials you're gonna need to do this project. Um, if you aren't joining me to paint at the exact same time as me, no problem. Um, we are going to be loading this video onto our YouTube channel, um, just like we have in the past. So if you're just watching, cause it, sometimes you just feel like you wanna, you know, decompress and watch something happen, something come to life before your eyes, it's a good thing to do. So we will be uploading these videos to our YouTube channel um, and then posting them on our Facebook and hopefully to IGTV. I'm just trying to get that worked out. Um, so before we get started, make sure you have the following things. Um, you're gonna want to work on a surface that's protected. So I have this big piece of paper underneath so that it protects the surface I have underneath. Um, if you are doing this um, painting, make sure you check with the people that you are living with to make sure that it is a good spot to do it, make a good decision about where you're going to do this. Um, don't do it on the couch or on the brand new carpet or somewhere that will soak in paint, make sure it's something you can wipe clean and make sure the paints you use, you know if they're washable or not, okay? Um, so make sure that you're also wearing clothes that you don't mind getting you know, paint on because that might happen. The paints I use are acrylics, um, so they are actually made out of like a plastic, which means that they're meant to stick around for a long time. Um, so if that means they get in your clothes, they're there for good. So keep that in mind. So you need a surface, you need paint clothes, um, you need something to paint on. So I actually found um, another pad of watercolor paper. So I'm gonna be using that today. So I'm gonna be painting on here. Um, we're going to need some water to wash your brush. You're going to need a paper towel to blot your brush. You're going to need your paints. So by the request of my son, Frankie, um, he asked if I could make a green llama. So that's what I'm gonna make. So I have my green and I have my black, my black and my white. So those are the three colors you're gonna need to make this project today. You're also going to need something to draw with. So I have a pencil that I'm gonna be using to see on the paper. So see how you can see that. Um, if you're working on cardboard like I was last week, awesome. You're being a good um, Earth Day, Earth Week, Earth Month um, citizen because you're reusing something, right? Last week when I made the sloths, I did it on cardboard just like that. Um, make sure if you are doing it on cardboard though, you can use pencil, but sometimes pencil makes those little holes in cardboard. It's really fun to do, um, but use chalk or something that you can erase. Chalk is always great because you can erase it. Um, you're also going to need brushes. So I use my trusty um, small flat um, square brush and then I have a round um, detail brush as well. If you only have something like this, remember like I say every week, if you only have a bigger brush or a brush that makes bigger lines, paint bigger. So get a bigger piece of paper, get a bigger surface, get a bigger piece of cardboard. Um, all the steps I'm showing you, you can do them really teeny tiny or you can make them huge. Actually, I would love to see a giant llama somewhere. That would be awesome. Okay, so I think that's everything we need. Paper, surface, clothes, paint, brushes. Let's get this one out of the way. Bright drawing utensil, paper towel, water, and let's get started. Okay. So again, my name is Kasha Dupuy from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. And thanks for joining me this week for um, Not A Library Life Create with Kasha. And we're gonna be making 
this super cute, cheeky little three colored llama. Actually, it's one color, but we're using three colors to make it monochromatic. So if you look at this picture, um, there's only versions of purple. There's only shades and tones and lights and darks of purple. It's only purple. Even that, what looks like black, it's actually just a purple. So monochromatic means only one color. Mono means one, chroma is color, and monochromatic means we've only used one color and the different shades and tones of that color. So I've actually looked at, or I was playing around this earlier today, and I made the exact same thing in three different colors, four different colors now if you count the purple. Um, so whatever color you have, it's going to work. So I'm gonna move it out of the way. I'm gonna put my new piece of paper here. And a couple more things, um, just in case my internet drops, as usual, I will be back. I won't leave you hanging, don't worry. Um, also, as usual, we're all, being at, we're all at home, um, in our own homes, and my boys are here, and my dogs are here, and my husband's walking around, so if it's noisy or we get interruptions, eh, it'll be more exciting today. <laughs> um, hopefully the puppies are sleeping, and Frankie's busy doing, I think he's having Nintendo Switch time, because he did his work very well today, so let's get started. So grab your pencil, grab your surface, and we're going to start drawing out the shapes that we're going to need to make our llama with. So... The very first thing we're gonna do is actually start with the face. So we're gonna do this part. So if you kind of look, um, it's kind of pointy, but it's flat here. So it's more of a squared shape. So I'm gonna start up here at the top of what his head's gonna be. Scoop down, straighten out, and then go back, okay? So I'm gonna start here, make a scoop, follow along, round it out and kind of bring it in a bit, and then bring it like that, okay? Now, when you're using a pencil, make sure you're not pressing too hard. You wanna press really lightly um, because then you can erase if you make a mistake. So actually, I wanna show you here. This is the little pink one that I did. Can you see the lines, the pencil lines there? Yeah, I pressed way too hard, but I was just sketching. So I didn't think I was going to be painting this, but I ended up doing it. So just be careful when you're using a pencil. You wanna go really, really lightly. Okay, so we have the llama's face. We're gonna go back to the top here and we're going to bring it all the way down just like that. So it kind of looks like a dinosaur, kind of crazy. And then you're gonna start here and bring it all the way down and scoop to make this like shape like that. I know, looks like a dinosaur or like a duck with a giant bill. So kind of interesting, or like a thumb, looks kind of like that. So we went here, or sorry, this way first, started up here, went down there, started under the chin, went around and made something, actually it kind of looks like a musical note, like really chubby musical note, just like that. Okay, that's big lines, right? We did big steps today. So I'm gonna go one more time. Here, there, there, here to make the neck, down, all the way around to make his llama butt, and then back there, okay? All those steps, we just did them. We're almost done the drawing part today. It's really quick. Since we've got a llama butt, let's make a little tail. So we're gonna go down and then scoop. So it kinda looks like a lemon. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be poofy. So actually, it's not super poofy, but um, that's what it kinda looks like. It, so it's weird drawing llamas. <laughs> they kinda like a hybrid between like a horse and a sheep and a alpaca and all those kind of things. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is draw some legs. Now the legs are thicker at the top, closer to the llama and then they get thinner and thinner and thinner as they go down. Now, this isn't exactly an accurate depiction of a llama. Um, they're a lot more fluffier and then the proportion a little bit different, but we are doing art and we can make our llamas look however we want. So if you want a short chubby llama, make a short chubby llama. If you want a really tall skinny llama, like a giraffe llama, do that too. This is your artwork and you can make it however you want. But this is how we make the legs. I'm gonna start right over here. I'm gonna start from the back and work my way over. So I'm gonna go like this and make one line. And then I'm gonna start here to make like the top of the leg. And I'm going to make it narrower as I get down, just like that. And square it off at the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna do my next leg here, so same thing. I'm gonna go straight. And I'm actually gonna stop just a little bit above. And that's a perspective thing. You can make your legs go all the way down if you like. But if you stop a little bit above the last leg, it looks like it's further back, yeah. A little bit of realism into our abstract llama. So again, you're gonna start at the top here and bring it down to make it narrow and squared off. You know what, that's even a little bit too short. I'm gonna go like this 
And sorry if my camera shakes, I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, next one. I'm going to do one more leg here and then one more leg here. So I'm gonna go here, one more. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna angle that a little bit more like that. Sorry if my camera shakes, everybody. There we go. And I'm gonna start again and make it long, um, wider at the top and narrower as I get in, round and square it off. Okay, and the last one, I'm actually gonna make it go a little bit forward like this. Start up here and I'm going to square it off. Now this one, see how it, was, it didn't change that much? So what I'm gonna do is make it narrower and then kind of join it and it'll cross that line. There we go. Sometimes there are days when stuff just draws really, really well, and other days you gotta make some changes, and that's okay. That's part of doing art, right? Here we go. So I'm just gonna go take a minute and go fix your legs a little bit if you don't really like the way that they look. If you love them, great. Plus, if you don't wanna fix them too much, um, you can always just paint over them, right? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to draw some ears. So we're gonna make these little half moon shapes. So pretend we draw a circle and then drew a line through the middle and we're gonna go like this. Like that. And like that. Now one goes one way and one goes the other way, okay? So just draw those little ears. And again, it's not exactly, you know, a perfect llama. But we're gonna make it do. We're gonna make it work. Okay, so sorry, just one second, everybody. So from there, what we're gonna do is add all of the fuzziness to our llama, okay? So one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create this kind of rounded mask shape right there, okay? So you're gonna start at kind of a dip in the head here, and you're going to go like that. Give him or her a little bit of a fuzzy around the face, just like that. Then you're going to start here and make bigger ones, make it kind of fuzzy over top of that line you drew, just like that, so all the way along the bottom, just the same way that you draw like a sheep, like some sheep fleece. Then we're gonna go up the top of the head here and go like this. And then we're gonna go around like that. So basically anywhere that would be fluffy around the llama. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here. Oh, actually, you know what? If you wanna keep this all fluffy here, you can. Um, one thing that I had added in was kind of that blanket on the llama's back. And someone had moved my eraser. I think Sam took it to do some drawing today. So I gotta find another one. But if you've already done that, no problem. We can always paint around it or you can rub it away with its chalk. But what we can do is make two lines that go down like this and then across like that. And that's that blanket that's on the back of the llama, just like that, okay? If you've already done the bumps and you don't have an eraser, don't worry. Just draw a line straight through paint around it, and then once everything's dry, you can erase um, the pencil lines afterwards, okay? So, let me just take a look at my drawing, make sure I've got everything the way I want it to go. Yep, we're not gonna do the face yet, we're not gonna do the details on the blanket yet, we're gonna do all those later with the paint. So we are ready to paint. All right, so we're gonna start with the fleecy part of the llama, so that's this part here. Um, and we're gonna make a lighter version of whatever color you have. So I'm gonna make like a lighter green. So I'm gonna take some water on my brush and just like any other time um, I'm painting with you, whenever you're mixing a color, do it in a new spot. So, other, cause if I added all the white into all of the green, I would only get one other color and it would be harder to mix stuff. So I'm gonna use my brush. And if you noticed, I'm using a piece of cardboard um, for my palette instead of a piece of paper that I was using before, parchment paper, because I've been doing more baking and I don't wanna use all of my paint or my parchment paper for my paint. So we're gonna take some of your main color, move it to a new spot, and then you're gonna take a scoop of your white and always take from the side, just like that, not right from the middle, and you're gonna mix it in place. So I'm gonna make a lighter version of the main color. Just like a lighter green. You know what, I'm even gonna make that lighter. 
And make sure that when you're mixing your paint, you mix it in the middle of the spot. So I'm getting a little bit bigger, but every once in a while, I'm just gonna push it all into the middle um, so that it doesn't dry out. Because when I've been teaching before, I go like this, or I've seen people go like this and make a big pile of that color, but then by the time you go to use it, it's dry, right? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do when we have this color is we're going to start to paint around the fleecy part of your llama. It's okay if you accidentally, oh, you know what, actually, you know what, we're gonna paint right over that fleecy part there. Yeah, that was one of the steps, because I practice this a lot. Anything that I do, I always practice, and sometimes I forget the way that I have figured it out to do the best way. So we're gonna go and paint this whole nose of his, of your llama, in all the fleecy bits, so just here. Just like so. Just like so. Mm -hmm. Now if you run out of that color, no problem, you can just mix yourself some more. Um, and if you find your paint is really dry, because I find in the spring, um, because it's getting warmer, my paint always dries really quickly. So sometimes you might see me dip my brush into my water. Um, it's just because that little bit of water makes my paint go a little bit further, especially when I'm working on watercolor paper. Watercolor paper is meant for really like watery paints, watercolors, right? And I'm using thicker, um, thicker paints, acrylics, and actually they're made up of different, um, different materials too. So sometimes you'll see me dip water in mine. You don't have to do that. You do what's best for your surface and what you're working on. Okay. So the next thing, or sorry, the same thing we're doing, we're just painting in this whole llama, just like so. And look, I have to make some more. So I'm gonna take some before I run out, and I'm gonna take a little bit more here and mix until I'm about the same color. Yeah, that looks pretty close. Maybe a little bit more white, just like so. And do you guys see that little clumpy I have in there? No? Oh, it disappeared. Oh, there it is. Oh, Frankie's playing. He must be having fun. <laughs> so all the way around your lawn, you're going to paint all these little fleece, this fleecy part. And it takes time. But you know what? That's one of the great things about art. It's not about rushing. It's about enjoying and watching something come to life before your eyes and trying something new. And remember, just uh, in case this doesn't look the way that you thought it was going to, that's awesome. That means that you are learning. Um, trust me when I say most of the things that I make, they don't turn out the first way or the first time that I make them. I have to practice and I practice and I eventually get somewhere I like to be. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, but that's why I do things like this, right? So that I can practice and see what works and see if there's a better way of doing it. You can't always make, you know, you have to learn, you have to practice and it can't always be amazing. You want it to be and that's an awesome way of thinking. And you know what, if you love everything you make, I think that is amazing. Yeah, okay. That's really awesome. If you can love every single, I'm proud of you. That's really cool. Okay, so we have the fleecy part of our llama completed. I'm really liking this green. <laughs> it's very bright. I've never seen a green llama. I wonder if I ever will. <laughs> okay, so we made the fleecy part and now we're going to go on to the legs and we're gonna do the ears and we're gonna do all the fluffy details as well as some of this here. So save some of this color in a spot for next time. So if you have any extra and you're working on something that dries really quick like me, push it into one little section here now you don't have to dry or you don't have to wash your brush because we're using the exact same color and we want to go darker. So take a scoop of your main color. Now take a teeny, 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 tiny touch of black. That's even too much. I'm just going to go like that. And you're going to start mixing that into your um, main color. See how it just turned a little bit darker? Just a tiny, tiny bit. Black is pretty strong. Um, especially black acrylic. It's very, very strong. So you want to just use a tiny bit at a time. Sometimes what also works is mixing like a slightly darker um, version of the green or whatever color you're using and then working that in. And see how much that already changed? Just that little tiny bit of black just kind of takes over, okay? 
So you're already making like a lighter or darker version, but you're only using part of that slightly darker version here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with your le the legs here. So you have a choice. I'm comfortable using this brush, but you can go on to your finer point brush if you like, or if you're painting bigger, um, use the one that you've got. I'll show you with this one first. So if you're going to use this finer point brush or whatever you've got that's smaller, go around here first. So do your outlining of the fleece and bring it down a little bit, just like that. I'll do these two legs this way. I'm outlining and then bringing it down. So you've got the fine details out of the way and make sure you wash a fine point brush if that's what you're using because if the paint dries in there, um, those get wrecked really quickly. Then you can take your dark or sorry, your bigger brush with your darker on it. And then you can just start filling in this bigger portion with the bigger brush, just like so. Ta-da! Okay, so you're gonna use the dark to fill in your llama legs, just like so. Now see what I'm doing, um, my line? I'm not always going one straight big line. I'm kind of working in sections. Lots of little kind of um, brush strokes like this. I find I have more control that way. It's really tricky, unless you practice a lot, to do one perfect straight line. Um, it's easier to kind of build what looks like a straight line. So I'll show you here. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna move it this way. And I'm gonna go here. Sometimes it's tricky when I'm painting on a table instead of on a canvas and standing up. Just like so. So see how I'm building that line? Like so. And same here, I can do one strong straight line like this, but no, look, I'm still building it. Yeah, sometimes I try not to think too much about what I'm doing. It's tricky when I'm teaching because I want to give you guys the best directions of how to do it. But sometimes my brain and my hands, because I practice so much, just do it. And I'm kind of narrating, <laughs> narrating what my hand decides to do. <laughs> I think that's cool sometimes. Sometimes it's frustrating, but there we go. So I guess this is kind of like a Halloween llama. Kind of like a Halloween green, like a zombie llama. <laughs> I would probably read that book if there was a book called Zombie Llama. Or Llama Zombie or something. Yeah, probably would. Probably, it sounds like a graphic novel. Hmm. Well, if anyone's bored and they would feel like writing a book, go ahead and do that one. I'd read it. Yep. And now you know how to illustrate your own pictures. Yep, you can draw and you can create a whole book based on what we're making today. Or to, you know, you can change it however you want, of course. That's the other thing with any of my art classes um, or any of my things that I teach or anything like that. If you don't like the way that I'm doing something, no problem, do it your own way. Try your best, explore different ways. You might come up with a way that's 100% better than mine um, or even that you just like it better, right? That is totally cool. That is a very important part about art. Accidental rhyming. <laughs> okay. So you're filling in your llama legs. Just like so. Oh, there's a puppy. Mr. Woke up. Oh no. Okay, there we go. Okay. So filled in the legs just like so. The next thing you're gonna do, and you can use your fine point brush if you want, or you can use whatever one you're most comfortable with. I'm gonna use this one just because it's already filled with paint. You're going to do the ears. So you're just going to go like this and fill them in, just like so. And they're little tiny ones, so you might wanna use a fine point brush, but I'll let you, I will let you make that decision for yourself. Okay. So we've got the legs, we have got the ears, and next thing we're gonna do is start the fleece. So I, you know what, I'm gonna switch my brush. No, you know what, I'm gonna keep with this one. Yeah, because if someone's using a big brush, I wanna show how you can make fine lines with a big brush. So when you're using um, a bigger brush like this to make fine lines, what you wanna do is use your chisel edge. So sometimes this brush can make lines that look like this, really flat and kind of wide. But if I put it on its point and you just use a tiny tip of the brush, I can make these really fine ones. So can you see that right there? So we can make really thick ones or it can make really fine lines. So we want to make really fine lines today. 
you can use a brush like this, of course, if you have. Another thing is that if you don't have a fine point brush um, and you really want fine, fine, fine lines, you can always go and use some markers afterwards as well. So wait for it to dry. And because we upload these videos um, to our YouTube channel, you can um, do some details with markers afterwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go around this blanket if you have one first, if you've decided to put one in. Just around the edges, just really quick. And it actually looks really neat if your lines aren't too perfect. If they're a little rough, if they got some, if they have some breaks in between them, they look pretty neat that way. And then after I do that base of there, of the blanket, you can do the top if you want. I'm just gonna do like that. And then you're gonna take your brush and you're going to start to fill around here. So this is one little kind of trick. Um, you can do the bump, the bump, and then the big back of the tail first, and then go like this, and then you kind of fill this in after, just like so. Okay, and you can go along these lines, and it's actually gonna clean it up a little bit if you go along these, even though they're touching the legs, because it will kind of blend those rough spots together, like so. Okay. And go around, and I'm gonna start here, and it doesn't really matter, where you go, where you end up, you just want to get around the fluffy parts of your llama, just like so. So don't do the face yet. Well, you know what? If you've already done the face, that's awesome. But I like to do that last, just like so. So I started here, I'm gonna go here, and here, and here, and here, like so. Just like that. I'm gonna make that one a little poofier, like that. So you're gonna do all the fluffy parts around your llama. And um, if you're done that step, awesome. If you're just like me and you just finished or still working on it, um, that's okay too. Make sure that just like for this color, you push a little bit of this into the middle so it doesn't dry out, okay? So after you've done the fluffy parts, we're gonna add some of these little details. So we're gonna make it look extra fluffy and you can make it look as fluffy or as non-fluffy as you like, okay? And there's really no rhyme or reason to these. So some is here, some is here, some is there. Um, these ones that I made earlier, um, this one I put like a little bit more than my purple one. This guy I put a whole bunch of really fluffy stuff on. This one's kind of in between, okay? So I'm gonna put this one here and I'll, I'll do this one the same way, similar to the way that I did the first one. So I did a little fluffy spot here and then I did a little fluffy spot here. And then I did a little fluffy spot here and I made two together there. And then I got some here and I'm gonna put some here. And you basically just wanna make him nice and fluffy. And sometimes doing clumps of two together or three together makes it look extra fluffy. <laughs> Lots of texture. Just like so. To make your llama look as fluffy or as smooth as you like. He's very fluffy today. <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> okay, so once you're done that, um, don't wash your brush because we're actually going to do a little bit of detail work on here. So you can use your brush and we can do some lines, some zigzags, some dashes, some dots. This is where you can get creative and make the pattern however you want to make it. So that's the one I made before, the very first one that was in the picture. Um, this one I put a heart on. I thought that might be popular with some people. I always get questions about hearts. Um, this one I kind of just improvised a pattern, which means just made it up as I go. I added some lines, some dashes, some zigzags, some dots. This one I had a really fine brush and I made some really, really fine little points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line here and a line here. And I'm gonna make a line here. And you know what? I'm actually gonna make some little um, kind of like square dashes just like that. And this one would kind of go off on the side like this, I think. And then you know what? I'm going to make this and I'm going to make a zigzag. There we go. So that's the beginning. It's not quite done because we have some other colors that we're going to add in and we can do that when we have them. So after that, you're going to wash your brush because we are done with this color. We have to make a slightly darker version of everything now. Okay. So 
you're going to mix um, some of your main color in a new spot. We're gonna make it darker. So remember I said, take just a teeny tiny bit. Okay, because this is very strong. You can make that pre-mixed kind of green color first and then move it in. You know what, that's not dark enough because that's pretty close to that. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. And you make just a tiny little bit of this. We don't need too, too much. We're just gonna make some hooves, um, some details for the blanket and the nose, the mouth and the eyes. Not very much at all. Okay, so once you have your color about that dark, you can make it darker or lighter. This is your llama. You can make it look however you wish. But once you have that color, you're going to put some on the bottom here for the hooves just a little bit like that. Okay, easy peasy. Then you can go ahead and do some details in this blanket, however you wanna do it. Mm, oh, I almost went to the wrong one. I'm gonna put, oh, you know what? I can put these little things, the little tassel things at the bottom, just like so. And then you're going to use this dark for the next thing after you've done your blanket, if you're doing a blanket, to do the mouth and the nose. And actually, I'm gonna to go to my small, my small brush for that. I'm just gonna finish up here. I'm gonna grab my small brush and a little bit of water and make sure it's not too wet. So you guys have seen what happens to my paint if it's too wet, it kind of runs everywhere, right? And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make a nose and a mouth and an eye. We're only gonna do one eye because it's in profile. And I'm gonna put a little bit closer so you guys can see. Hopefully the shadow is not too bad. Let's go like that, okay? Let's see, there we go. So for the nose, what you're gonna do is go down and across. So you're just kind of cutting that edge of the face off and then you're gonna paint it in just like so. So it's not really dark. You can make a black nose if you like, but I think it looks a little bit more monochromatic and a little bit more um, sophisticated if you don't go with a straight up black like so. So after you've done your nose, the next thing we're gonna do is a little mouth. So you're gonna start close to the bottom and you're gonna draw a little mouth, just like that. Ooh, it's very hard holding a painting up here while, while you're trying to teach <laughs> and do the step. And then we're gonna use the same dark to do the eye. So the eye is just a little scoop and you can add eyelashes if you want. So let me move here more, sorry about that everybody. So a little scoop, like so. And then you can do some eyelashes because I always get questions. Can we add eyelashes? Of course you can, just like that, okay? And then of course you can use a little bit more dark to fill in your blanket a little bit more, just like so. Um, you know what, I'm gonna go with do a finer line with my finer brush. Make some more dashes in here. And you know what, I'm gonna do some dots. Oh, I thought I put my hand in too much paint. Like so. Okay, so that one is finished. Quick and easy, monochromatic little llama, just like so, using only three colors, very simple steps. These are really fun to do on like a big poster. Um, if you draw a whole bunch of llamas and you'll probably get better every single time you draw them, paint them all different colors. Um, and it's technically considered a study right? Because you're looking in all different, you're, work, you're working on the same thing in all different colors and every time you're getting better. So you're studying how to make this better. So it's pretty awesome. Um, so yes, thanks for joining us today to make our little cheeky llama. Um, I'm again from uh, the Niagara Lake Public Library and I'm Kasha Dupuy. Um, and if you have any questions or feedback or any suggestions of what you want to make next, please send me an email, kidupuy at nautilpl.org. Um, I would love to hear from you. Um, it's very, I'm used to teaching to a classroom um, and getting feedback like in real time from people. So I'm still adjusting to this um, online pressing finish <laughs> and then it goes into space, into cyberspace. So please send me feedback. I would love to hear it. Um, good, bad, positive, negative, constructive. I would love, love, love to hear it. So um, hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Enjoy the sunny weather and we will see you again next Monday um, on, I think it's May 4th. Mm-hmm, we might have a special project coming up for May the 4th. 
Um, so again, have a wonderful Monday and thanks for joining us. And if you um, weren't able to create with us right now, don't worry, we're gonna be uploading it to our social media channels and I will post it on our Facebook page once it's ready to go. Okay, have a great day and have a great week. Bye everybody.